Well, today we're going to continue this series, Bookish, where we're looking at controversies that are facing the church through the lens of Scripture. Now, I uh, went to college just down the road here at UC Irvine. You all know where that is? Down in Orange County. And I went there because I was really interested in their theater department. And it was almost brand new in those days, and it was really excellent. Well, I got into that program, and I started to work really hard at it. It was my, my focus and my mission, you know, to get into that theater world. But the thing was, once I was there for a couple of quarters, I started noticing that there were some other pretty cool classes happening as well, especially over in the dance department, where there also seemed to be some pretty nice-looking girls, you know. So I ended up, at that point, sort of expanding my vision, so to speak. I started going over there and taking more, you know, classes in the dance department. I started getting involved in doing modern dance concerts, you know, where whatever you lack in skill, you can kind of make up for in spirit. Well, the thing about it was, the more that I expanded my vision to the dance department, the more I started to lose my focus in the drama department, pretty soon I wasn't doing anything really uh, very well. Well, that's what's called in other areas of life mission creep. It can happen to a company. It can happen to a not-for-profit. It can happen to a military operation where suddenly you just lose the thread. You lose the focus of that original vision and mission. I also owned a Baskin-Robbins for a little while, and when we first started the business, it was really interesting. It was simple. You had three dipping cabinets. You had 31 flavors. You sold it in a cup or a cone of three sizes. That was basically the business, but by the time we left, they had us selling, you know, a soft serve and parfaits and coffee. They'd taken out eight flavors and put in this big Sunday bar. But still, you know, people came in. They mostly wanted a double scoop of Jamocha Almond Fudge. It was a classic example of mission creep, just kind of losing the thread of that mission. Now, that can happen to a kid in college. It can happen to a business. It can even happen in our walk of faith. It can happen in a church, you know. We can start to lose focus. We can start to become really wrapped up in culture war issues, in electoral politics, in church politics. And why all of those subjects, all of those things should be taken seriously by Christians because sometimes they really do intersect with our faith still. It's a shame when those things begin to knock us out, sort of creep us out of our mission, which is to really be disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, it can happen. It can happen to all of us. It can happen even to the best of us. You remember the Apostle Peter. He was pretty well known for being a staunch disciple of Jesus. That was his focus. That was his mission. And he displayed that the first time he saw Jesus. You remember? Peter was out. He was fishing with his brother Andrew. They're throwing the nets out onto the lake. Suddenly, Jesus comes by and says what? Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Well, Peter, he hears this. He gets excited by this. And he makes his first big step into being a focused disciple of Jesus. He just drops the nets, and he goes, and he follows Jesus, right? And he continues on that way. It isn't too much longer when one day Peter is out on the lake, with his friends, his other disciples. And he's out there, and suddenly a big storm comes up, you remember. There's a huge storm. The boat is getting tossed this way and that way. There's waves, and there's mist coming over the boat. And Peter, through that mist, through that, that, that storm, he sees Jesus. Sees Jesus walking towards him improbably, miraculously, right on the water. And Peter, again, being this staunch disciple, this man who's just like focused on Jesus, he volunteers to go out and meet Jesus even on that water. He says, Lord, if it's you, if it's you, come to me, call me, and I will come to you on the water. And Jesus says, come on. And Peter got down out of the boat 
And he walked on the water, and he came towards Jesus. So focused was this man on following Jesus, trusting Jesus, being his disciple. And a little later on, in one of the most important moments of Jesus' ministry, Jesus asked his disciples, who do you really think I am? You've been watching me all this time. You've been listening to me. You've seen what I've done. It's time to, to stand up. Who do you really think I am? And Peter, again, being that staunch disciple with that focus on Jesus, he stepped right up. He said, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Peter made that confession coming out of his desire to trust and follow Jesus. But still, even a man who was that focused on Jesus could have his moments of mission creep. Right after Jesus uh, asked them that question and Peter made this incredible confession of his faith, Jesus began to explain to all of the disciples, including Peter, what it would require for him to fulfill his mission. Jesus started to explain what it would be for him to fulfill his mission. And he said that he would have to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed. And at that moment, all of a sudden, Peter, who'd been trusting and focusing on being this disciple of Jesus, I'm going to follow Jesus, I'm going to do what you say, all of a sudden, he had a little mission creep. He decided now it was his mission to be Jesus' boss. And he tells Jesus, took, took him aside and began to rebuke him, which is a strong word. He rebuked Jesus. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. And Jesus, of course, turned right around to him and said, no, get behind me. Get behind me, Satan. I'm the Messiah. You're the disciple. Get in line. Get behind me. When you get in front of me, you're a stumbling block to me. And you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Get behind me. Remember your mission. Don't be creeping. Now, like Peter, it's easy for Christians to start to lose the thread, lose the focus of what our real mission is, especially when we're under pressure, as we are today. When we're struggling with issues, as we are today in the United Methodist Church, and the differences and the divisions that are existing there, and have for decades, we all know that the United Methodist Church has split. There's a new denomination out there. But just to keep things in perspective, let's just remember this. That new denomination is joining ranks with 32 other, 32 other Methodist denominations in North America alone. You get that? There are 33 just Methodist denominations in North America alone. Each one of those denominations is born out of differences, born out of division. Each one of those, though, also traces its roots back to the teachings of John Wesley. Each one of them has its own traditions. Each one of them has their own history of those divisions, of those differences, of those mergers, of those watershed moments that led those people called Methodist to decide they're going to identify as a different kind of Methodist. For instance, it leads people to do things like become the African Methodist Episcopal Church or the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church or the Liberation Methodist Church or the Free Methodist Church or the Protestant Methodist Church or the United Methodist Church or the Global Methodist Church, whatever it is. These are denominations that come out of differences that are important because they are about people deciding how they want to live out 
their faith. And the differences are not trivial, you know. The differences are not trivial. They come down to issues like the interpretation of Scripture. How much weight to be given to traditional interpretations of Scripture? How much credence should be given to newer and more novel interpretations of Scripture? Those differences that create denominations come out of arguments or disagreements over the authority of Scripture. Is Scripture inspired by the Holy Spirit once and for all people, or is it a product more of a certain people in a certain time? And is it all that binding on people today? These are real and legitimate differences that give rise to different denominations. But the fact of it is, and listen, those differences and the way that we sort our way through those differences and even the way that we defend those differences, that should not be taken as a substitute for mission. Because no matter what, we all have one mission. And the only mission is to be disciples of Jesus and help other people become true disciples of Jesus Christ. That's the one mission. And John Wesley, who was the founder of Methodism, understood this. He realized this. He knew that there were real and important differences that gave rise to different denominations, that those differences should be respected. But he also said that even with those differences, we ought to be able to reach across those lines and join hands for the sake of the greater mission. He said one way to get our focus off those little divisions, the little things that, that divide us, is to ask of one another the bigger questions. For instance, is your heart right with God? No matter where we stand, is your heart right? Right with God. Do you really desire as a church or a denomination or an individual Christian, do you really desire to be in right relationship with God? Is your heart right with God? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? He said we should ask. That's a fundamental ask. That's a fundamental question. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe that he is that one supreme and eternal God? You believe in Jesus Christ. He said, we should ask of one another, do you love God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul and with all your strength? And then he said, we should definitely ask this one. Is your heart right as my heart is with your heart? In other words, I can love you across those denominational lines. Can you love me, Wesley saying? Because if you can, give me your hand. Give me your hand. So that we can pursue that one mission together. Again, he understood there were real divisions. Those were important divisions. They shouldn't be feared. Neither should they be trivialized or ignored. But. Neither should they be mistaken for a mission. Because again, we have just that one mission. You know, the Apostle Peter, as I said, he was a pretty staunch disciple of Jesus. That was his focus, that was his mission. But even he, you know, kind of went off once in a while. He had that mission creep, just like we all can. In fact, on the very night that Jesus gave himself up for all of us when he went out to give himself over to the people who would crucify him for our sake. On that very night, as he was being arrested, Peter, staunch disciple, follower of Jesus, truster in what Jesus had to say, suffered a little mission creep 
He decided all of a sudden it was his job to be Jesus' protector. And he pulled out his sword and he cut off the ear of one of those men that was arresting Jesus. And Jesus, in effect, turned around and said, do you really think it's your job to stop me right now? Do you really think it's your job to stop me from fulfilling my mission as given to me by my Father? Mission Tragically, on that very night, you know, on that very night when Jesus was suffering, and it came time for Peter to love Jesus with all of his heart, soul, and mind, and courage, when it came time for Peter to stand up and confess once again, yes, that's my Lord, that's Jesus, my Lord. When it came time for him to really fulfill his mission as a disciple of Jesus, guess what? He failed. He couldn't do it. Three times people came to him and said, do you know that man? And three times Peter said, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. We get knocked off our mission. But I pray that, that that doesn't happen to us. See, the thing of it is, look, all these differences, all these divisions, all these things that are happening right now, the controversies, it's all going to settle down one day. It's all going to settle down. And when the dust settles, as it will, because it always has, there may be lots of denominations, the big question is going to always be for the many denominations, for the many churches, for the many individual Christians, how faithful have we been to the one mission? How faithful have we been to the one mission? Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. That's the mission. I pray that we can fulfill it. Well, next week, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to take a look at how it is that uh, sometimes what Jesus tells us is hard to take, but it's always given to us in love this day, let's just uh, remember that while many denominations are out there, there are many denominations and they are varied. They need not be feared. They need not be trivialized or ignored. All those differences are there. They're there. But neither should they be mistaken for a mission. We have one mission. No matter how strange the practices of a holiest holiness Methodist might be to a liberal Methodist, we still have the same mission. To be and make disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, let's go ahead. We're going to move into our prayer time now. So like always, I'm just going to ask you to take a moment.